career, he found himself in a foreign country with a special forces team training that country's special forces unit. Near the end of the training, the teams were on a forced march through some arid mountains with a surprise to come. Please welcome Jason Krause. So there I was, once again in a foreign country with a team of a few guys that I've known for a little while. I was actually kind of new to Special Forces. And it was another beautiful country with amazing people. And we had about a handful of the host nation army guys with us. And we had been walking through the mountains for a couple hours. We have 60 pounds on our backs, so I thought. And it was just so hot, about 100 degrees in the middle of summer up in the mountains. It's just like having one of those heat lamps on the back of your neck, you know, just sizzling. After about the second hour, your head slowly starts to look down as you're trudging along. <laughs> And we come up to the Slot Canyon, where there's a cliff on either side. The mountains kind of come in. It's kind of a narrow little pathway. It's got a little stream. It looks kind of nice. And we kind of perk up, and we start exchanging some stories and talking a little more. It's kind of fun. We got a, a little shade from the cliff walls. And then we come to this big pond, nothing but water, from one side of the wall to the other side of the wall. And it's, it's pretty, pretty deep, pretty lengthy. And we line up in front of these two cables going across this pond. Big, huge cables bolted to the side of the canyon walls, about four foot, one about four foot on top of the other. So you can climb up on one and hold the other and kind of shuffle your way across. And they slowly rose to the top of what was a little 20 foot cliff where the stream come over the cliff, and that's what created the pond. So we can only put one person on this cable at a time. I'm a new guy, so I'm in the back, and I'm sitting there watching what's going on, and I'm thinking, man, it would be nice to take a dip in that water. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, hey, I've got a wet weather bag, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cinch that thing up, and I'm going to swim across this little pond. It wasn't really all that little. But anyway, so I get inside the rucksack, open up my wet weather bag, and I pull out this 10-pound rock that one of my teammates <laughs> graciously put in there for me. I don't know how I got in there. Take all the things out from the outside of my rock, put them in the wet weather bag, tie it up tight, cinch it down, and I start making my way into the water. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be good. Water's coming up above the ankles, nice and cool and wet. Oh, so refreshing. Above the waist. <laughs> Oh, this is nice. The rucksack floats. Whew. So I get out there where it's above my head, and I've got my hands on the rucksack, and I start paddling, and I'm swimming along, and it's like, this is awesome, until I look at the other side, and I'm thinking, I don't know if I can get out on that cliff. That's not looking so good. <laughs> so then I'm starting to fight this little bit of panic coming up. Ooh, this is going to be bad if I can't make it out the other side. I have to turn around. We've got all these host nation army guys gonna be laughing at us <laughs> I decide I think I can make it I think I can do this I keep swimming I get closer I'm like man, I don't know rocks are all slippery I look back to see who's on the cable maybe I can handle my rucksack and climb up there it's one of the one of the host nation army guys can't let them bail me out so I keep swimming, and I keep swimming. I'm thinking, I have to try this. I've come this far. I've got to go through with this. And thank God, one of my fellow teammates, the first one of our guys that went across, he's up top. He's been watching what's going on and probably been laughing his butt off. He starts to make his way down this little cliff. And I'm thinking, whew. And he gets to the one rock that's as far as he can go to help me out and he's looking down at me and I'm looking up at him and I'm swimming my last little ways and I'm thinking man this would be bad news if he went to help me out and I pulled him in <laughs> I'm thinking well he can see 
the hazards just as well as I can. If he's willing to take the risk, you know, it's, it's my best option. So I get up there and I get to the point where I'm right next to the cliff and I'm thinking, I should be able to touch the bottom somewhere on one of these rocks. I'm trying to reach nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> so I do my best to give a little push, you know, a little swim and lift up the rucksack to him. He grabs it and throws it up there. Whew. Here we go. <clears throat> I do my best to give a little swimming kick and throw my arm up and he grabs a hold of me and we lock wrists. Oh, it's just this wave of relief comes over me and he slowly starts pulling me up. And I'm thinking, come on, come on. I'm trying to get some traction on these wet rocks. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> it's all on my friend. My buddy's pulling me up there slowly and slowly and surely. He gets me up for that brief moment. We're like hugging together on this rock. A little uncomfortable, but <laughs> <laughs> got to do what you got to do. So he makes his way up. I make my way up. And everything worked out great. Looking back at that time, you know, there was about 12 guys on my team, and I would, it would take me a little while to sit and think and remember all the names of all the guys on the team. But I tell you what, there's one name that I'll never forget on that team. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters. <laughs> Good job on that. Hopefully you prepared speech.